This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello, there, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Dabby. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, April the 29th, is a former NHL goalie who is known for playing for a lot of teams. But he has 454 career wins. Great for a hockey goalie. Not number one, of course, that's Martin Brodeur. But this guy is actually a coach and a former player. He's known as Cujo because of his mask featuring the snarling dog from the Stephen King novel Cujo. This guy played for St. Louis, Edmonton, Toronto, Detroit, Phoenix, and Calgary. Was part of Canada's gold medal winning team in the 2002 Winter Olympics and now has and has the most well, he retired as the most career wins for any goalie in history to not play on a Stanley Cup winning team, passed by Roberto Luongo, and the first goalie to have 30 or more wins in the regular season for five different teams. His name is Curtis Joseph. Cujo, baby. He is now 55. So he's an American senior citizen, but not a Canadian senior citizen. Now, um, the story of Cujo's personal life is kind of awkward. I'm not going to speculate too much on it. I'm going to just tell you a little bit. So Cujo was not Curtis Joseph. His, his, real, his real name was Curtis Monroe because that, his mother was named Gwenny Monroe. But gave up Curtis to the Eakins family. Because Wendy knew Jean, knew Jean Eakins from the nursing home they both worked in. And they thought the Eaginses could provide a better home for that. He was nicknamed. He was named Curtis. But anyway, Gene Little actually divorced Howard Eakins and married Harold Joseph, and decided to use Joseph Curtis's last name. So he grew up with two older stepbrothers and three older stepbrothers, uh, stepsisters, and a stepmother from a previous marriage. The family is of mixed race because Harold and Victor, well, Harold Joseph, was black. Curtis Joseph's legal name was Curtis Shane Monroe until he was signed with the St. Louis Blues and he became Curtis Shane Joseph. Anyway, Curtis Joseph would play hockey in the NCAA for the University of Wisconsin and did, did quite well. Unfortunately, well, no one drafted him, so he was undrafted. However, the St. Louis Blues heard of him and signed him to a free agent entry level deal. So Cujo stopped playing at the University of Wisconsin and went to St. Louis. He broke in with the NHL, all that. So anyway, he would play for St. Louis, but would not get much, as Vincent Riendo was the decrease a lot of time. Curtis played well, but by 91, the Blues were ready to move on from him. After the Blues signed Brandon Shanahan from the New Jersey Devils, being a restricted free agent, the Devils were entitled to compensation. The teams couldn't agree on what the compensation was. St. Louis offered Cujo, Rod Brindamore, and two draft picks to the Devils. The Devils balked and wanted Scott Stevens. I can understand the Devils wanting Scott Stevens because he's a good defenseman. I mean, the goaltending thing, New Jersey was set for life for Sean Burke and Chris Terrari. The only problem was that Sean Burke had some contract issues and decided to play for the, the Canadian national team, like the, the touring national team before the Olympics in Albertville in 92. Burke never played a game for the Devils again, and then he went to Hartford. So the Devils screwed themselves over, but they got Martin Bordeaux, so that's okay. Anyway... The case went to arbitration. Stevens went to the Devils. Cujo was safe in St. Louis. But, thankfully, though, the Blues did think Cujo was a better goalie than Riendo or even Guy Hebert. In 93, he helped the St. Louis Blues in one of the biggest upsets in first-round history when he took down the Chicago Blackhawks, who were seen to be the all-time favorite to get out of the Western, or the Campbell Conference, if you will, to face Pittsburgh. We might see Pittsburgh Chicago Part Two in 1993, but it wasn't meant to be. Pittsburgh also fumbled well, well to the cupcakes. I mean the Islanders. 
Anyhow, Cujo was in that in 93, and he helped Stymie Chicago, giving St. Louis the four-game sweep. Then he took on the Toronto Maple Leafs, his future team, if you will, and he played awesome. Cujo was the main reason why St. Louis got out of Toronto with the 1-1 split instead of being down 2-0 after the first few games. Cujo's play was why St. Louis got to Game 7 against Toronto, even though that he shit the bed in the final game, in Game 7, 6-0. He was actually named finalist for the Vesna Trophy, best goalie, and took third behind Belfort and Barrasso. Unfortunately, St. Louis did not do well in the 95 playoffs, and they decided to not sign Cujo, so they decided to let him go in free agency. And Edmonton said, why not? They had two good goalies at training camp, Bill Ranford and Cujo. Edmonton couldn't think of a contract or even trade Cujo's rights away. Cujo didn't start in the intro in 96. So he was signed with Las Vegas in the IHL, the International Hockey League. But the Oilers finally decided to, well, despite the fact they wanted to trade him to Boston, they actually thought Cujo was a better fit, so they traded Ranford to Boston and took Cujo back. Cujo would be popular for the Oilers. He would help Edmonton out. And if it wasn't for Cujo, Edmonton would not have pulled off back-to-back first-round shocks in 97 and 98. 97 against the Dallas Stars, in which Cujo made one of the greatest saves of all time off of Joe Noondike in overtime of Game 7. Noondike had a chance to end the series and put Dallas in the second round. Cujo somehow, in some way, stretched out and got the save. Robbie Noonan, and of course, Bob Cole made a great call on all that. Seconds later, Todd Marchant would end the series for Edmonton as he won the game with his overtime goal. Edmonton would de- get taken down by Colorado in the second round. However, in 98, the Oilers would get revenge on the Avalanche in the first round. Down three games to one, the Oilers somehow, in some way, came back to force a Game 7 in Denver, and Cujo was amazing. Let's not forget the sa- the weird save he made when he overslid, and it looked like Colorado had an empty net. I don't know who it was. I would have said Kamensky, but no, couldn't be Kamensky. But anyway, Colorado had an open net, and then Cujo, for some reason, got his stick on it and saved it, and can't forget... Uh, what is his name? Steve something. I would say Steve Breen and Derek Kane's reactions when they watched the game, when they did the game for ESPN. Nevertheless, Oilers beat the Avalanche 4 nothing in that game 7 and went on to lose the second round to Dallas. However, Edmonton let him walk as a free agent. And the interesting story is how he got to Toronto in the first place. Allegedly, Ken Dryden, who was the president and part GM of the Leafs, ironic because, you know, Dryden was a hab, was walking with his son to get some ice cream. But then he bumped into Don Meehan, who was Cujo's agent. And they walked over and Meehan said Curtis Joseph was available. And Toronto, and Dryden wasn't so sure if he wanted Cujo because, after all, Felix Potten was in that. But he decided, he decided, screw that, I'm going to take Cujo. So he signed with the Leafs in 98 and then traded Pot then to the Islanders. It worked out perfectly. He had three consecutive seasons of 30 plus wins, twice runner up for the Vesna in 99 and 2000, which was great. And won the King Clancy Memorial Trophy in 2000 for excellence in humanitarian stuff because Cujo would always buy tickets for underprivileged kids who were in the children's hospital in Toronto. Sick kids. Cujo helped the Leafs in his first season get to the Stanley Cup semifinals, a.k.a. the conference finals, by taking down Philly and Pittsburgh on their way to face Buffalo. If it wasn't for that Domanitang, De- De- or De- the Dominic Orangitang in that, the Leafs would have taken down the Sabres and gone to the Stanley Cup finals. Unfortunately, though, Buffalo did. Well, after all, Cujo was 
I mean, Hashik was out for the first two games of the first round. I mean, that series. And the Leafs only split with Buffalo. The heroes, heroics of one Dwayne Rollison will never be forgotten in Buffalo lore. And supposed to be forgotten in Leaf lore. Anyhow, the Leafs did pretty well for himself. Themselves. In 2002, the Leafs got to the Stanley Cup semifinals slash conference finals again, thanks to Kuchel's heroics, especially against Ottawa and the Islanders, because both sides went to seven games. Kuchel was the big deciding factor for the Leafs, especially against the Senators. I would like to interrupt the Kuchel stuff with a personal story. Uh, game six of the 2002 Stanley Cup playoffs between the, the Sens and Leafs. I remember this as a childhood memory, because, you know, you should know my dad died two years ago. Not from COVID, but from from uh, heart failure. That's all I'm going to say. Anywho. So anyway, it was interesting. I wanted to watch game six on the couch with my dad. And of course, my mom was working at the nursing home in New Hamburg. So anyway, we talked hockey and all that. We watched the hockey game and all that. It was amazing. A bonding moment. Regardless, the Leafs did lose to Carolina in the Stanley Cup semifinals because of another acrobatic goalie by the name of one Arturs Urbe. So, anywho, Cujo looked good in Toronto. Unfortunately, Pat Quinn did not want to give Cujo a four-year contract. He wanted he gave Cujo a three-year contract, or at least tried to, but Cujo wanted four years. I wouldn't blame Kujo for going for four years. So he decided to leave to go to Detroit and all that. Now, of course, there was some speculation because of the fact that there was a problem between Pat Quinn, who was coach general manager, and Kujo because Curtis Joseph was the starting goalie for the first game of the 2002 Winter Olympics when Pat Quinn was the head coach and got crushed by Sweden 5-2, ironically, too. And then Kucha was benched for the rest of the Olympics and Martin Berdur came in and saved the day, getting the gold medal and all that. It was, you know, a lot of frosty relationships. So Kucha went to Detroit. They won the Stanley Cup in 2002, but they needed a goalie because Hashik decided to retire. I wouldn't blame him. So anyway, they gave Kucha a three-year $24 million contract, or $8 million a year, to replace Hashik. Joseph found his form in the second half of 2003 and helped Detroit win the division and possibly take down the Anaheim Ducks in the first round. Sadly, though, John Sebastian Jaguar was just that damn good in Game 1, stopping more than 60 shots in Game 1. Was What was it, double? Or was it triple overtime, I think, in Game 1 of that series? Regardless, Cujo got swept by the Ducks. It was shocking. And all that. And they were like, what the heck is going on here? But during the 2003 offseason, for some strange reason, Hashik said, screw it, I'm going to come out of retirement. And Detroit decided to sign Hashik to a deal because he, he felt that G Detroit GM Ken Holland thought that Hashik was going to sign with competitors. So he basically panicked and signed Hashik to a deal, which was weird. But he wanted to trade Joseph, but basically... Joseph's large contract and off-season surgery meant that he couldn't really be moved. Detroit had to deal with the Hashik Cujo starting goalie situation. Cujo would be in the minors to, um, like, rehab and all that, but he came back mostly after Hashik was nursing a groin injury. However, Hashik would have issues with his groin and decided to call it quits in February, which meant Cujo was the number one goalie. Detroit won the President's Cup, the President's Trophy for her best team in the regular season. But as often as the case, it's a curse. And strangely enough, many legacy was the starting goalie in the first round. Legacy would struggle 
in the first round against the National Predators, so Cujo had to come in, and Cujo took the reins. And he looked pretty good, despite the fact that Calgary would beat Detroit in Game 6. I don't know if I'm going to go by Marty Jello now. So, anyway. Of course, 2004-05 didn't exist because of, the play, because of the strike. So, Cujo was hoping to be somewhere else. Several teams wanted Cujo, including Pittsburgh and Phoenix. Cujo said, why not? He took a one-year deal with Phoenix, mostly because Phoenix had a new coach, Wayne Gretzky. So, on October 20th, 2005, he got his 400th win. And then kept signing with Phoenix. When he got his 30th win with Phoenix, he was the first goalie to have 30 or more wins for five different teams in a season. St. Louis, Edmonton, Toronto, Detroit, and Phoenix. He would do 50 wins with those teams. So, too. Anyway, Cujo thought that he could be in Toronto. He said he would be fine with a backup role and a reduced salary. Ottawa won it to San Cujo if they could get rid of Martin Gerber, which they couldn't really do. So in January 2008, Cujo signed a pro protracted career with a uh, um, contract with Calgary. It was kind of weird. He went to Calgary and all that. However, Cujo would win it a game in the first round of the Flames 2008 playoffs against the Sharks, making him the first goalie to win a postseason game for five different teams, St. Louis, Edmonton, Toronto, Detroit, and Calgary. Phoenix never made the playoffs on his watch. <clears throat> After that season, he was signed for the 08-09 season to the Leafs for a one-year $700,000 contract. He was the backup. He unfortunately, at the end of the season, tied Gump Worsley for the most losses by a goaltender. Thankfully, though, that record would not last as Martin Berdur would do that for 397 losses. But of course, Berger has the most wins, so, well, obviously, you're going to lose a lot. Kujo decided to retire in 2010. And he had a 454 regular season, went fifth in the NHL at that time, and his 63 playoff victories are the most by a goalie without winning Stanley Cup. That's one record Longo doesn't have. <clears throat> so, anyway, Kujo. Uh, did play for Canada at the 96 World Cup of Hockey and the 2002 Winter Olympics, among others. Kujo has been married twice and has seven children. I mean, his first wife, he and his first wife had four kids, but they divorced in 2009. And then Joseph would marry a Playboy Playmate in 2012. And has three kids through that one. He had an autobiography, which was released in 2018. So, 454 wins. In 943 regular season games, 51 shutouts, 279 goals against, and in the playoffs, 63 and 66 with a 245 goals against average, 16 shutouts. So, yeah. He did pretty good for himself. Is he Hall of Fame worthy? Hmm. Up in the air, I say, but wow, I didn't know I went that long with Kuja. Well, I mean, as a Leaf. Leafophile, you know I had to go long. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm Jeff Dunn, I do.